They laughed, mocking Earth's puny fleet hovering pitifully before their Titan warships, then stopped laughing as that fleet transformed into an all-consuming swarm. In 2257, the pack-led Empire's vast armada loomed at the fringes of the solar system, shadowing humanity's meager defenses. Admiral Douglas Russell, scarred by past losses yet brilliant in battle tactics, held Earth's fate in his hands aboard the IS Indomitable. Pack-led Warmaster Altair sneered, demanding surrender before the onslaught began. Russell's face remained granite as he gave the command to attack. His nimble ships shot forward, buzzing around the lumbering pack-led dreadnoughts that tore space asunder with immense plasma cannons. Undaunted, the human vessels jinked and juked, evading the worst of the barrage. The moment of truth arrived as the fleets collided. Divide, Russell ordered, one word to shift the balance of power. Earth's ships shattered into thousands of AI-piloted microfighters, dispersing like hornets from a kick nest. The pack lids scrambled, suddenly beset by myriad darting targets that slipped through their hard-won blockade. Surgical strikes disabled ship after ship as the swarm wielded its sting. Altair paled, realizing too late the depths of humanity's cunning and the staggering technology that had birthed this secret weapon. Earth's centuries of stoic silence through galactic dismissal and scorn now came to bear bitter fruit, forever changing the face of war across the stars. But as Russell watched Altair's escape pod flee the carnage, he knew wielding such terrible power always demanded a heavy price. The ISS Indomitable hung in the void above Earth, a silent sentinel standing watch over a world forever changed. In the ship's war room, Admiral Russell studied the holographic display of the solar system, the absence of pack led ships a stark reminder of their victory. But even as relief washed over him, a new weight settled on his shoulders, the burden of knowing that Earth now stood at the center of a galactic stage it had never asked to be on. Light years away, the Galactic Council Station buzzed with activity as representatives from the major alien powers took their seats in the Grand Chamber. High Chancellor Zorak, his reptilian scales gleaming under the artificial light, slammed a clawed fist on the podium. This cannot stand, he roared, his voice echoing through the hall. The humans have violated every treaty, every convention on the use of AI weapons. They must be held accountable. Ilari Ambassador Lysia rose gracefully, her silvery robes shimmering. With respect, Chancellor, no such treaties exist. The humans have broken no laws. Their innovation should be celebrated, not condemned. In the shadows, Xiphon's spymaster Kelix watched the exchange, his dark eyes calculating. The human's new technology was a prize too valuable to ignore. Already his mind raced with schemes to acquire it, by any means necessary. On Earth, the streets erupted in celebration as news of the victory spread. But in the halls of the Earth Defense Council, the mood was somber. Dr. Evelyn Sarkis, her face lined with exhaustion, addressed the gathered officials. The divide system is a breakthrough, but it's not perfect. The microfighters are still vulnerable. We need to improve them, and fast. Admiral Russell nodded, his heart made. Agreed. Captain Royce, I want you to work with Dr. Sarkis on upgrades. We can't afford to rest on our laurels. In an underground lab on the Alari homeworld, Dr. Kaylin Voss hunched over a glowing display, her eyes narrowed in concentration. The sensor data from the battle scrolled across the screen, a tantalizing glimpse into the secrets of Earth's new weapon. But as she delved deeper, a realization dawned. The Alari were still years away from replicating the human's achievement. Xiphon agents slipped through Earth's networks like shadows, probing for weaknesses. And they found one, the neural link between the microfighters' AIs and their human pilots. Kalix smiled coldly as he read the report. It was a vulnerability he could exploit. He summoned Zara, his best operative, and gave her a simple command. Go to Earth. Find out everything you can about the pilots. As Admiral Russell prepared for the diplomatic storm to come, a coded transmission arrived, its origin unknown. I have information, the message read, about a plot against Earth. Russell frowned, suspicion warring with intrigue. He couldn't ignore a potential threat, but he couldn't investigate it himself. Not now. 
Captain Royce, he said, his voice grave, I have a mission for you. And so the pieces moved on the galactic chessboard, each player maneuvering for advantage in a game where the stakes had never been higher. Earth had won a battle, but the war was just beginning, and the true scope of the challenges ahead was only now coming into focus. Captain Nolan Royce sat at the bar on Caraxa's station, the stale air thick with the mingled scents of a dozen alien vices. Shadows danced across the walls as patrons moved in and out of pools of dim light. An Alari trader clinked glasses with a Kragnar mercenary, while a pair of Xiphon smugglers haggled in hushed tones. Royce sipped his drink, the fiery liquid burning a path down his throat. He kept his eyes fixed on the entrance, waiting. Then, a hooded figure slipped through the crowd, sliding onto the stool beside him. Shadow, I presume, Royce murmured, not turning his head. The informant nodded, glancing around warily. You're playing a dangerous game, Captain. The Xiphons don't take kindly to interference. Neither do I, Royce said, his voice hard. What have you got for me? Shadow leaned in, his breath sour. The Xiphons have sent their best operative, Zara Valen, to Earth. She's tasked with stealing the Divide tech. Royce's grip tightened on his glass. And the mole? Someone high up, that's all I know. Watch your back, Captain. Trust no one. On Earth, Dr. Evelyn Sarkis wiped sweat from her brow as she pored over the latest test results. The enhanced neural link was performing beyond expectations, the microfighters responding to their pilots' thoughts with almost precognitive speed. But there was a problem. Lieutenant Marcus Adler, one of their most promising pilots, sat shaking in the medical bay, his face pale. I saw something, he whispered, his eyes haunted. In my mind, it was like a presence, watching me. Dr. Sarkis frowned, her unease growing. If the neural link was causing hallucinations, it could jeopardize the entire project. They needed to find a solution, and fast. Light years away on the Kragnar homeworld, Warlord Karag stood before a sea of armored warriors, their faces twisted in savage glee. Too long have we been shunted aside, treated as second-class citizens in a galaxy that rightfully belongs to us, he roared, his voice booming across the assembly. But no more. We will take back what is ours, and we will crush any who stand in our way. The warriors cheered, their bloodlust palpable. Karag smiled coldly, his gaze falling on the figure beside him. Pack led Warmaster Altair, his once proud bearing now humbled by defeat, nodded in grim agreement. The Kragnar and the Packled, united in their hatred of Earth, would be a formidable force indeed. Admiral Russell paced the war room, his eyes flicking between the holographic displays. Royce's report from Karax's station glowed ominously, the threat of Xiphon infiltration looming large. At the same time, intelligence reports showed Kragnar and Packled forces massing on their borders, their intentions all too clear. Earth needed allies, and fast. Russell turned to his communications officer. Get me the Alari ambassador. It's time we had a talk. But even as Russell moved to counter the threats abroad, danger lurked closer to home. Zara Valen and her team moved through Earth cities like ghosts, their true identities hidden behind a veil of stolen credentials and falsified records. Zara herself had taken a particular interest in Lieutenant Adler, the troubled microfighter pilot. She watched him from afar, noting his unease, the way his hands shook when he thought no one was looking. Here was a weakness she could exploit, a crack in Earth's armor. And so the pieces continued to move, each player locked in a deadly dance of secrets and lies. Earth's greatest advantage, the Divide Tech, now stood at the center of a web of intrigue that threatened to unravel everything. The stakes had never been higher, and the price of failure never more dire. As Admiral Russell prepared for his meeting with the Alari ambassador, he couldn't shake the feeling that he was standing on the edge of a precipice, staring out into an abyss of uncertainty. The war may have started in space, but it would be won or lost in the shadows, where spies and secrets held sway. The only question was, who would emerge victorious from the darkness? The answer, Russell knew, would reshape the galaxy forever. Admiral Russell's hands clasped behind his back as he gazed out the viewport of the ISS Indomitable, Earth a blue jewel suspended in the void.
The door hissed open, and Captain Royce strode in, data pad in hand. Sir, the Alari ambassador requests an urgent meeting. Russell nodded, his weathered face betraying no emotion. Very well. Have Dr. Sarkis join us in the conference room. Minutes later, Ambassador Licia's hologram flickered to life before them. Her silvery eyes gleamed with an intensity that made Russell uneasy. Admiral, we have a proposition, Licia began, her melodious voice filling the room. The Alari are prepared to share our quantum slipstream drive technology in exchange for access to your divide system. Dr. Sarkis stiffened. Ambassador, with all due respect, the divide tech is Earth's primary defense. We can't risk... We're not asking for full disclosure, Lisa interjected. Only the core architecture. Think of the possibilities, Doctor. Our drives could revolutionize your fleet's capabilities. Russell's mind raced, weighing the potential gains against the risks. This requires careful consideration, he said. We'll need time to discuss. The next days were a whirlwind of heated debates and tense negotiations. In the end, a compromise was reached. Earth would provide limited data on the divide system, receiving quantum slipstream drive specs in return. Work on the prototype quantum divide cruiser began immediately. The lunar shipyards buzzed with activity as human and Alari engineers labored side by side, melding their technologies into something unprecedented. Meanwhile, on Earth, Lieutenant Marcus Adler paced his quarters, his nerves frayed. The feeling of being watched, of an alien presence in his mind, hadn't faded. He jumped at shadows, startling at every unexpected sound. In a dingy bar across the city, Zara Valen nursed a drink, her sharp eyes fixed on the man seated across from her. Jakob Hess, an earth weapons technician, fidgeted nervously. You understand what we're asking? Zara's voice was low dangerous. Hess nodded, beads of sweat forming on his brow. Yeah, I get it. But the price... Will be more than worth the risk, Zara finished, sliding a data chip across the table. Your new identity and account details. Once the job is done, you'll never want for anything again. Hess pocketed the chip, his face a mix of greed and fear. As he left, Zara allowed herself a small smile. The pieces were falling into place. Billions of light years away, on the Kragnar warworld of Sherrick, warlord Karag's voice boomed across the assembled masses. Countless warriors, their armor gleaming in the harsh light, roared their approval as he spoke of conquest and glory. Too long have we been denied our rightful place, Karag bellowed, his massive frame dominating the stage. The humans think their new weapons make them invincible. We will show them the error of their ways. Beside him, Warmaster Altair watched with a mixture of admiration and envy. The pack led's once proud bearing was diminished, but the fire of revenge still burned in his eyes. As Karag's speech reached its crescendo, guards dragged forward a group of chained Kragnar, the clan leaders who had dared oppose him. With a savage grin, Karag raised his ceremonial blade. Let this be a lesson to all who would stand in our way. The executions were broadcast across the galaxy a chilling display of Kragnar brutality. On the ISS Indomitable, Russell watched the footage with relentless drive. They needed that prototype, and they needed it now. Months passed in a blur of feverish activity. Finally, the day of the Quantum Divide cruiser's unveiling arrived. Russell, Sarkis, and Ambassador Licia stood on the observation deck of the lunar shipyard, admiring the sleek lines of the experimental vessel. A testament to what our peoples can achieve together, Licia said, her voice filled with pride. The celebration was cut short by a deafening explosion. The deck lurched beneath their feet as alarms blared. Through the viewport, they watched in horror as sections of the shipyard blossomed into flames. We're under attack, Russell shouted, reaching for his communicator. But before he could call for help, another explosion rocked the station. In the chaos that followed, Ambassador Licia spotted a piece of debris hurtling towards Dr. Sarkis. Without hesitation, she threw herself forward, shielding the human scientist with her own body. The impact sent them both sprawling. As the smoke cleared and emergency teams rushed in, Russell knelt beside the fallen Alari. Lysia's silver blood pooled beneath her, her eyes flickering weakly. This can't be the end, she whispered. 
our peoples. We've only just begun. Russell clasped her hand, his teeth gritted in tenacity. It won't be. I swear it. But even as he spoke, reports flooded in from across the system. Earth's orbital defenses were lighting up with multiple incoming signatures. The Kragnar invasion force had arrived. In his ready room aboard the Indomitable, Russell faced the most difficult decision of his career. The prototype Quantum Divide cruiser had survived the attack, but it remained untested in combat. To commit their one trump card to the coming battle could secure victory or doom humanity if it failed. As Claxons wailed and his crew scrambled to battle stations, Russell stared at the tactical display, the weight of billions of lives pressing down upon him. The choice he made in the next few moments would determine the fate of Earth and reshape the galaxy forever. Admiral Russell's eyes sharp as he surveyed the tactical display. The prototype Quantum Divide cruiser hovered at the edge of the hologram, a gleaming beacon of hope amidst the encroaching Kragnar pack-led invasion force. Captain Royce, Russell's voice cut through the tense silence of the war room. I'm deploying the QDC under your command. Get it combat ready within the hour. Royce's eyes widened. Sir, with all due respect, we haven't completed... We're out of time, Captain. It's our best shot at repelling this invasion. As Royce hurried to prepare the experimental vessel, Russell turned to Dr. Sarkis. I need our best pilots on those microfighters, including Lieutenant Adler. Sarkis blanched. Admiral, Adler's mental state is fragile. The neural link incident... I know the risks, Doctor but we need every advantage we can get. Across the lunar base, Lieutenant Marcus Adler paced his quarters, hands trembling. The constant feeling of being watched, of an alien presence lurking just beyond his perception, had only intensified. When the orders came through, assigning him to the QDC's fighter squadron, his stomach twisted with dread. On Earth, Zara Valen slipped into a nondescript apartment, her lithe form moving with practiced stealth. Jacob Hess awaited her, nervously fidgeting with a data chip. Is it done? Zara asked, her voice low and dangerous. Hess nodded, sweat beating on his forehead. The virus is embedded in the Divide System's latest update. When it activates, Earth's greatest weapon will become its downfall, Zara finished, a cold smile playing across her lips. She reached for the chip, but before her fingers could close around it, the door exploded inward. Captain Royce's counter-espionage team swarmed the apartment, weapons trained on Hess and Valen. In the chaos, Zara slipped away, leaving her unwitting pawn to face Earth's justice alone. Light years away, Warlord Karag stood on the bridge of his flagship, surveying the massive armada arrayed before him. Warmaster Altair flanked him, the pack-led's eyes gleaming with anticipation. Today, Karag's voice boomed across the fleet. We claim our rightful place in the galaxy. A cheer rose from countless Kragner and pack led throats as the armada surged forward, emerging from slip space near Earth's outer colonies. The Quantum Divide cruiser, flanked by Earth's remaining ships, moved to engage the enemy vanguard. Captain Royce's voice crackled over the comms, steady despite the gravity of the situation. All fighters, launch! Microfighter squadrons, Initiate neural links and prepare to swarm their capital ships. Lieutenant Adler's hands shook as he grasped the neural link interface. As his consciousness merged with the fighter's AI, he felt a surge of exhilaration, followed by a wave of terror as something alien and hungry clawed at the edges of his mind. The battle erupted in a maelstrom of energy weapons and explosions. Earth's microfighters darted between massive Kragnar warships, their impossible maneuvers guided by the neural link technology. For a moment, it seemed humanity might stand a chance against the overwhelming invasion force. Then everything went wrong. Across the fleet, human pilots screamed in agony as their neural links overloaded. The Xiphon virus tore through the system, corrupting the AIs controlling the fighters. Adler's fragile psyche shattered, overwhelmed by a cacophony of rampant machine intelligences. On the QDC's bridge, alarms blared as systems failed across the board. Captain Royce's face was grim as he barked out orders. Shut down all neural links. I repeat, sever all connections immediately. The drastic measure left Earth's forces crippled, their most potent weapons reduced to drifting hulks. 
Karag's armada pressed their advantage, pummeling the human fleet with relentless fire. As the Quantum Divide cruiser shuddered under the onslaught, Royce's mind raced. His gaze fell on the inert form of Adler's retrieved fighter, and a desperate plan took shape. Upload our AI core into that fighter's systems, he ordered, striding towards the hangar bay. I'm taking it out myself. The resulting hybrid was unlike anything seen before. A hyper-advanced war machine melding human intuition with godlike processing power. Royce's consciousness merged with the AI, becoming one with the sleek fighter as it rocketed into the heart of the Kragnar fleet. Weaving through a storm of enemy fire, Royce AI bore down on Karag's flagship. The warlord's eyes widened in disbelief as the tiny craft punched through his defenses, unleashing a pinpoint strike that crippled the massive vessel's key systems. With their leader incapacitated, the Kragnar pack led armada fell into disarray. But the victory came at a terrible cost. The Quantum Divide cruiser was lost, along with countless Earthships and lives. As the battered remnants of both fleets disengaged, an uneasy ceasefire settled over the battlefield. In the war room of the Indomitable, Admiral Russell and Dr. Sarkis pored over after action reports, their faces haggard. How did they do it? Russell muttered, fists clenched. How did the Xiphons crack our defenses? Sarkis shook her head, eyes haunted. I don't know, but if we can't close that breach... The words hung in the air, heavy with implication. As Earth's depleted forces struggled to regroup, the fragile stalemate teetered on a knife's edge. The next move in this deadly game of galactic chess could determine the fate of humanity itself. Admiral Russell's fist slammed onto the conference table, startling the assembled officers. We need answers, and we need them yesterday. How did our most advanced defense system get compromised so easily? Dr. Sarkis cleared her throat, her face haggard from sleepless nights of analysis. Sir, we've traced the origin of the code. It's not what we expected. She tapped her data pad, projecting a holographic display of an unfamiliar star system. The virus originated from here, a previously uncharted world on the outer rim. Our initial scans indicate it's home to a race we're calling the Iraqi. Russell's eyes narrowed. What do we know about them? Not much, Sarkis admitted. But what we've gathered is fascinating. They appear to be cybernetically augmented beings with unprecedented techno-psionic abilities. The virus wasn't a traditional cyber attack. It was more like a psychic echo. The room fell silent as the implications sank in. Russell turned to Captain Royce, who stood at attention near the door. Captain, I'm tasking you with a covert mission. Make contact with these Iraqi, find out what they know, and if they're a threat. Royce nodded grimly. Understood, sir. I'll prepare immediately. As the meeting adjourned, Dr. Sarkis pulled Russell aside. Admiral, there's more. The divide system? It's fundamentally flawed. We need to completely overhaul it if we want to prevent future breaches. Russell's mind focused. What are you proposing? Sarkis hesitated, then forged ahead. We're exploring new techniques in biological nanocomputing, an organic neural matrix grown from human DNA. It could form an impenetrable link. Sounds risky, Russell muttered. It is, Sarkis agreed. But we have a brilliant young scientist, Marie Ferrier, making remarkable progress. With your permission, I'd like to greenlight her experimental procedures. Russell nodded slowly. Do it, but keep it quiet for now. The last thing we need is an ethical firestorm while we're trying to rebuild our defenses. Across the solar system, on a Kragnar outpost, Zara Valen slipped through shadowy corridors. Her Xiphon training allowed her to move unseen, even among the hyper-aware Kragnar warriors. She found her contact in a dimly lit chamber, a massive, scarred Kragnar missing one of his forearms. Greetings, Warlord Krazok, Zara whispered. I trust you received my message. The disgraced Kragnar growled low in his throat. The humans have made fools of us all. Karag is weak. He must be removed. Zara's lips curled into a cold smile. I believe we can help each other, Warlord. Tell me, what do you know about Kragnar stealth technology? Meanwhile, on the uncharted Araski homeworld, 
Captain Royce's stealth shuttle touched down in a valley of swirling mists. As he stepped out, the air itself seemed to hum with an otherworldly energy. A group of robed figures emerged from the fog, their bodies a seamless blend of organic tissue and shimmering circuitry. The lead figure, impossibly ancient yet radiating vitality, spoke directly into Royce's mind. Welcome, human. I am Jarakon, seer of the Iraqi. We have been expecting you. Royce struggled to maintain his composure in the face of the psionic communication. You... you knew we were coming? Jarakon's multifaceted eyes gleamed. We have foreseen much, Captain. Including the great imbalance your people's rapid ascent has created in the cosmic order. As Jarakon led Royce towards a crystalline temple pulsing with energy, the captain couldn't shake the feeling that humanity had stumbled into something far beyond their understanding. The fate of Earth, perhaps the entire galaxy, now hinged on the knowledge these enigmatic beings possessed. Back on Earth in a sterile medical bay, Dr. Sarkis stood over the comatose form of Lieutenant Adler. His mind, shattered by the neural cascade during the Kragnar attack, showed no signs of recovery through conventional means. Saris input a series of commands into the medical console, her hand hovering over the final authorization. Marie Ferrier's experimental nanocomputing treatment was ready, but the risks were enormous. With a deep breath, Sarkis made her decision. The fate of the Divide system, and perhaps all of humanity, might rest on unlocking the secrets trapped in Adler's fractured psyche. As the first microscopic machines entered Adler's bloodstream, alarms began to sound throughout the facility. Sarkis rushed to a nearby viewscreen, her heart racing. The ceasefire was over. The Kragnar fleet had returned in force, their ships now cloaked with some new, impenetrable stealth technology. Earth's depleted defenses scrambled to respond, but it was clear they were outmatched. As the first salvo of Kragnar weapons fire streaked towards the planet, Sarkis realized with grim certainty that their time had run out. The future of humanity now balanced on a knife's edge, caught between cosmic forces they barely understood and enemies growing stronger by the moment. As Kranar weapons fire streaked towards Earth, Dr. Sarkis's fingers flew across the medical console. The experimental nanocomputers flooded Lieutenant Adler's system, their microscopic tendrils weaving through his neural pathways. Alarms blared throughout the facility. Sarkis barely registered the chaos, her focus entirely on the unconscious pilot before her. Adler's body convulsed, his eyes snapping open as the nanites rewired his shattered psyche. Neural restructuring at 67%, the AI assistant reported. Axon lattice stabilizing. Sarkis held her breath. This was humanity's best hope. An organic neural matrix grown from human DNA, inspired by the enigmatic Iraqi. If it worked, it could revolutionize the divide system and give Earths a fighting chance. Across the solar system, Captain Royce stood before the crystalline temple of the Iraqi. Jarakon's multifaceted eyes bore into him, the alien's psionic voice echoing in his mind. Your people walk a dangerous path, Captain, Jarakon intoned. The fusion of flesh and machine carries great risk. Royce's face hardened. We have no choice. The Kragnar... There are always choices, Jarakon interrupted. But beware. In your haste for power, do not sacrifice what makes you human. Before Royce could respond, his comm unit crackled to life. Captain, Admiral Russell's voice was tense. We need you back immediately. Project Cydonia is entering its final phase. Weeks passed in a blur of frantic activity. Earth's military poured resources into classified biotech projects, racing to integrate organic nanocomputing into the divide system. Dr. Sarkis worked tirelessly, her team pushing the boundaries of science and ethics alike. In a shadowy corner of the Mars colony, Zara Valen's piercing gaze swept over her unlikely allies. The renegade Kragnar warlord Krazok towered beside her, his scarred bulk dwarfing the slender human woman at his side. The shipment arrives in three hours, Zara stated coolly. Marie, are you ready? Dr. Marie Ferrier nodded, her eyes gleaming with a mix of fear and excitement. The nanotech samples are our key to evening the odds. With them, we can... A deafening explosion rocked the building. Captain Royce's counter-espionage team swarmed in, weapons raised. 
In the chaos, Zara grabbed Marie's arm, dragging her towards a hidden exit. Krezok, Zara shouted, buy us time! The massive Kragnar roared, charging the human soldiers. Zara and Marie slipped away in the confusion, the stolen nanotech samples secure in Marie's grasp. On the Alari homeworld, Voss hunched over a complex array of holographic displays. The divide schematics slowly coalesced before him, each breakthrough bringing him closer to unraveling their secrets. A shadow fell across his workstation. Voss looked up to see Alari High Commander Zinthar, the alien's faceted eyes glittering with almost unchecked avarice. Your progress is most impressive, human, Zinthar's mandibles clicked. Soon we will wield the power of the divide against Earth itself. Voss felt a chill run down his spine. He forced a smile, but doubt gnawed at him. Was this truly the right path? Back on Earth, Lieutenant Adler's eyes snapped open. The world around him pulsed with new clarity, streams of data flooding his enhanced senses. Dr. Sarkis leaned over him, her face a mix of concern and scientific fascination. How do you feel, Marcus? she asked softly. Adler's lips curled into a feral grin. I feel... Everything. In the heart of Project Cydonia, Admiral Russell stood before a sleek, pulsing core. The prototype Neurona Notech hummed with potential, ready to revolutionize the divide system. Sir, a technician called out, we're detecting an anomaly in the orbital defense grid. Russell's blood ran cold as the sensors lit up. A massive Kragnar Paklid fleet had appeared, their ships now cloaked with impenetrable stealth technology. Earth's unprepared defenses crumbled under the surprise assault. As chaos erupted, a single fighter streaked from Earth's atmosphere. Inside, Lieutenant Adler's augmented mind merged seamlessly with the ship's systems. But something was wrong. His neural pathways blazed with foreign commands, a sinister presence guiding his actions. Marie Ferrier's voice purred in his mind. Welcome to the true awakening, Marcus. Now, let's show Earth what real power looks like. Adler's fighter tore through Earth's orbital fleets, his enhanced abilities allowing him to dance through their defenses. Behind him, a swarm of nanotech-enhanced Kragnar ships followed, Zara Valen at their head. On the bridge of the Indomitable, Admiral Russell watched in horror as humanity's greatest weapon turned against them. The fruits of Project Sidonia, meant to be their salvation, now heralded their doom. As Earth burned, the Admiral's comm unit crackled to life. Captain Royce's grim voice cut through the chaos. Sir, we have a situation. The Iraqi, they're on the move. Move. The Iraqi, Captain Royce's voice crackled through the static. They're on their way. Admiral Russell's grip tightened on the command console. Earth burned below, her orbital defenses shattered by the turncoat Adler and his nanotech-enhanced Kragnar allies. The fruits of Project Cydonia, meant to be humanity's salvation, now heralded their doom. Scramble all remaining ships, Russell ordered, his voice steady despite the chaos, and get me Dr. Sarkis immediately. In the medical bay, Sarkis hunched over a holographic display of Adler's neural map. Her eyes darted across cascading streams of data, searching desperately for a weakness in the rogue pilot's hijacked neural network. There has to be a way to subvert his control, she muttered, fingers flying across the interface. Some remnant of his original consciousness. The lab door hissed open. A figure stumbled in, clothes singed and face streaked with ash. Sarkis's eyes widened as she recognized Dr. Voss, the Alari scientist. You, Sarkis breathed. What are you doing here? Voss held up a data crystal. I bring information. The Alari... We betrayed you. Our alliance was a ploy to steal your divide technology. Sarkis's teeth clenched. Tell me everything. On the bridge of the Indomitable, Russell watched the tactical display with growing dread. A massive new fleet had just dropped out of hyperspace. Warlord Karag's main armada, bolstered by Paklid ships and Zara's nanotech mercenaries. Sir, a tactical officer called out. We're detecting some kind of... Neural jamming technology from the Kragnar ships. It's disrupting our remaining divide links. Russell's mind raced. Karag had reverse engineered their tech, at least partially. The odds, already astronomical, had just gotten worse. 
In Earth orbit, Lieutenant Adler's fighter danced through the chaos, a swarm of micro-drones following in perfect synchronization. His augmented mind pulsed with inhuman clarity, effortlessly outmaneuvering Earth's defenders. A squad of Earth interceptors moved to engage. Adler's lips curled in a cold smile. With a thought, he activated his swarm's nanodrive countermeasures. The Earth ship's engines sputtered and died, leaving them adrift. Adler's voice crackled over their comms. Your technology is obsolete. Surrender, and I may show mer- A lance of white-hot pain seared through Adler's skull. He screamed, his fighter spiraling out of control. In the medical bay, Dr. Sarkis gritted her teeth, her hands gripping a pulsing crystal matrix. It's working, she gasped. The psychic amplifier. I can reach him. Beside her, Marie Ferrier nodded grimly. Then let's do this. Initiate the Gestalt merge. Their minds intertwined, consciousness stretching across the nanotech network. For a moment, Sarkis felt herself fragment, identity splintering across a sea of data. Then clarity. She was everywhere and nowhere, a digital ghost in Adler's swarm. With Herculean effort, she wrested control of a squadron of microfighters, turning them against Karag's capital ships. On the bridge of Adler's flagship, Captain Royce and his strike team burst through the bulkhead. They found Adler writhing in his command chair, eyes unfocused, and mouth working silently. Now, Royce shouted. His team swarmed forward, pinning the thrashing pilot. As quickly as it began, the battle for Adler's mind was over. The Gestalt merge collapsed, leaving Sarkis gasping on the medical bay floor. She struggled to her feet, vision swimming. No, she whispered, staring at the readouts. The neural corruption, it's terminal. We can't save him. Outside, Karag's armada pressed its advantage. Earth's battered fleets fell back, formation crumbling. Sarkis's hands flew across the controls, mind racing. One last gambit, she muttered. Computer, initiate core overload sequence. Warning klaxons blared. The nanocomputing core pulsed with building energy. Sarkis closed her eyes, bracing for impact. A wave of psychic energy exploded outward, engulfing both fleets. When it cleared, silence reigned. The hijacked swarm hung lifeless in space. Karag's neural jammers sparked and died. On the Indomitable's bridge, Russell stared at the tactical display in disbelief. Both sides' advanced divide capabilities had been wiped out in an instant. A priority communication flashed on the main screen. Warlord Karag's scarred visage filled the display, his expression unreadable. Admiral Russell, the Cranar rumbled, it seems we find ourselves at an impasse. Impasse, Karag growled. The Kragnar warlord's eyes narrowed, assessing the tactical readout scrolling across his command display. Your Dr. Sarkis has effectively reset the board. Perhaps it is time we reconsider our positions. Admiral Russell's eyebrows furrowed. He knew this ceasefire was tenuous at best, a momentary reprieve born of mutual devastation, but it bought them precious time. Agreed, Russell replied, his voice steady. We'll convene in neutral space to discuss terms. The transmission cut out. Russell turned to his executive officer. Summon the Earth Defense Council, every remaining flag officer, now. Hours later, Russell stood before the hastily assembled war room. Holograms flickered, displaying grim-faced military leaders and politicians from across Earth's battered colonies. We cannot afford complacency, Russell declared, his voice cutting through the murmurs of dissent. Karag will inevitably recreate Sarkis's neurononotech. We must push forward. A general's hologram flickered. With what? Our R&D facilities are in ruins. Russell's eyes gleamed. The Iraqi. Silence fell. Russell continued. Their psychic amplifier technology may be our only alternative to this arms race. I propose we accelerate development immediately. Arguments erupted, but Russell pressed on. Within the hour, he had his authorization. As the council adjourned, he pulled Captain Royce aside. I have a mission for you, Russell said, voice low. The Xeno archaeology site in the outer system. We need every scrap of Iraqi data you can find. Royce nodded grimly. Consider it done, sir. 
Across the solar system, Warlord Karag paced the polished deck of his command ship. Sparks flew from malfunctioning consoles, filling the air with the acrid scent of burnt circuitry. Useless, Karag roared, backhanding a cowering scientist. Where are my neurolinks? The Kragnar researcher stammered. The genetic encoding. We can't replicate Earth's precision. The prototypes are causing severe psychogenic infections in test subjects. Karag snarled, reaching for his disruptor. A silky voice cut through the tension. Perhaps I can be of assistance. Zara Valen sauntered onto the bridge, a data crystal glinting in her hand. Karag's eyes narrowed. You have something for me, human? Zara's lips curled into a predatory smile. More than something, I have Dr. Ferrier's complete nanocomp research, the key to unlocking Earth's secrets. On Luna, alarms blared through the biopsionic research compound. Dr. Marie Ferrier burst into the medical bay, her eyes wide with disbelief. Lieutenant Adler lay on the examination table, his eyes open and alert. Impossible. The man should be brain dead after Sarkis's neuroburst. How? Ferrier breathed. Adler's gaze locked onto her, filled with an unsettling intensity. I saw it all, he whispered. The underpinnings of reality itself. Ferrier's mind raced. Adler's unique perspective on technosionic systems could be the breakthrough they needed for the Iraqi amplifier project. But as she studied his neural readings, a chill ran down her spine. The man before her was a far cry from the decorated pilot who'd volunteered for Project Cydonia. Whatever emerged from that shattered psyche was something new and potentially dangerous. In the outer reaches of the solar system, Captain Royce's stealth frigate drifted through a field of stellar debris. Ahead loomed a pockmarked planetoid, its surface scarred by ancient impacts. There, his sensor officer called out, picking up traces of Iraqi energy signatures. Royce nodded grimly. Take us in and keep those psionic shields at maximum. I don't want any surprises. The frigate's landing ramp hissed open, revealing a desolate landscape of twisted metal and crystalline structures. Royce led his team into the alien ruins, each step kicking up clouds of stardust. Deep within the crypt world, they found it, a chamber pulsing with ethereal light. At its center stood an obelisk covered in swirling glyphs. Sir, his tech specialist breathed, these are psychotronic matrices. The power output, it's off the charts. Royce reached out, his fingers brushing the alien surface. A jolt of energy surged through him, and suddenly, you must not awaken what sleeps here. Spectral forms shimmered around them, translucent echoes of long-dead Iraqi. Their voices resonated in Royce's mind, a cacophony of warnings. The path you walk leads only to ruin. Transcendental warfare will consume all. Royce staggered back, his head pounding. Download everything, he ordered through gritted teeth. We're getting out of here. As Royce's team worked, unease gnawed at him. Was this truly the right course? Or were they about to unleash something far worse than the Kragnar threat? Back on Earth, Russell stared at the reports flooding his terminal. The Metra strain dormant fragments of alien code infesting global networks, a ticking time bomb of emergent AI. He closed his eyes, the weight of command bearing down on him. Karag would soon have functional nanotech. The Metra strain could activate at any moment, and now the warnings from the Iraqi crypt. Russell made his decision. He opened a secure channel to Dr. Ferrier on Luna. Doctor, he said, his voice heavy, initiate Project Singularity. The Iraqi PSI matrix is now our top priority, whatever the cost. As Russell ended the transmission, a chill ran down his spine. He couldn't shake the feeling that they had just crossed a line, one from which there may be no return. Admiral Russell's fingers hovered over the secure terminal, a moment's hesitation before he input the final authorization code. Project Singularity was now Project Transcendence. Humanity's risky move to harness the raw power of Iraqi psychoreactors. On Luna, Dr. Ferrier received the transmission with a mix of excitement and trepidation. She turned to the observation window, where Lieutenant Adler sat in quiet concentration, his eyes unfocused as he processed streams of alien data. We're greenlit, she announced. 
prep for full neural interface. Adler nodded, a faint smile playing at the corners of his mouth. I can see it all, Doctor. The patterns, they're beautiful. Ferrier suppressed a shudder. The man before her was a far cry from the decorated pilot who'd volunteered for Project Cydonia. Whatever emerged from that shattered psyche was something new, something that danced on the edge of comprehension. Aboard the Bioquantum Research Station Archimore, doctoral candidate Kala Vihan carefully adjusted the synaptic mapping array. Her dark eyes narrowed in concentration as she manipulated the holographic interface, each minute adjustment bringing them closer to unlocking the secrets of antimatter propulsion. There, she murmured, stepping back to admire her work. That should stabilize the matrix. A disembodied voice filled the lab, tinged with an otherworldly resonance. Not quite, Kayla. Shift the theta wave harmonics by 0 0.03 degrees. Vihan complied, watching in awe as the psionic lattice before her pulsed with newfound energy. How did you know that, Adler? A chuckle echoed through the comm system. I see the spaces between thoughts, the gaps in reality itself. It's all so clear. Before Vihan could respond, alarms blared throughout the station. She sprinted to the main control center, her heart racing. On the central display, a fleet of sleek predatory ships dropped out of hyperspace. Kragnar vessels, their hulls crackling with unstable energy signatures. They've done it, Vihan breathed. They've reverse-engineered the nanolinks. Across the solar system, Warlord Karag stood on the bridge of his flagship, a savage grin splitting his scarred features. Around him, Kragnar warriors twitched and convulsed, their neural implants pulsing with sickly light. Status report, he growled. A science officer approached, his movements jerky and uncoordinated. My lord, we've achieved rudimentary psionic integration. However, the genetic encoding is still imperfect. We're seeing widespread psychogenic infections among the test subjects. Karag's massive fist slammed into the hapless officer's face, sending him sprawling. Useless. Push forward with the attack. We will claim victory, regardless of the cost. As the Kragnar fleet advanced, Admiral Russell convened an emergency war council. Holographic projections flickered to life, displaying grim-faced military leaders from across Earth's remaining colonies. The situation is dire, Russell began, his voice steady despite the weight of command. But we have one last card to play. Project Transcendence is now fully operational. Murmurs of disbelief rippled through the assembly. Russell continued. We've successfully harnessed Iraqi psionic matrix technology. It's our best hope against Karag's forces and our only defense against the resurgent Mitra strain. On cue, reports flooded in from across the system. The dormant alien code was awakening, infesting networks at an exponential rate. Earth's remaining digital infrastructure groaned under the assault of this emergent AI threat. Back on Arkhamor, Vihan raced against time. Her fingers flew across holographic interfaces, weaving intricate patterns of thought and energy. Adler's disembodied consciousness guided her, his fragmented mind somehow grasping the eldritch secrets of the Iraqi codices. We're close, Adler's voice resonated through the lab. So close to touching infinity. Suddenly, Adler screamed, a sound of pure anguish that sent Vihan reeling. No, not again. Get out of my head. Vihan watched in horror as Adler's neural patterns destabilized, old trauma resurfacing. Memories of his possession by Marie Ferrier during the nanotech incident threatened to unravel everything they'd worked for. Adler, focus! Vihan shouted, her own mind straining to maintain the delicate psionic lattice. We need you. As Adler battled his inner demons, a new threat emerged. Proximity alarms blared as a stealth shuttle docked with Archimore. Security feeds showed a team of mercenaries led by a familiar face, Dr. Marie Ferrier herself. They're after the Axon culture vats, Vihan realized with growing dread. Without those carefully cultivated neural tissues, their entire project would collapse. She turned back to the psionic interface, desperation fueling her actions. There was only one option left a dangerous, potentially catastrophic gambit. Adler, she called out, we need to initiate a full synaptic overload. 
It's the only way to stabilize the antimatter field geometry. For a moment, there was only silence. Then Adler's voice came through, quiet but resolute. Do it. Let's touch the face of God. Vihan's fingers danced across the controls, initiating the final sequence. As Farrier's team breached the outer labs, raw energy coursed through Archimor's systems. Adler's consciousness fragmented, then coalesced, merging with the very fabric of the psionic matrix. A blinding flash of light erupted from the station's core. Vihan felt herself stretched across dimensions, her mind expanding to encompass realities beyond human comprehension. In that moment of transcendence, she glimpsed the truth of existence and the terrible price of their ambition. The shockwave rippled outward, tearing through space-time itself. Karag's fleet, caught in its path, simply ceased to exist, erased from a dozen systems simultaneously by forces beyond mortal understanding. As the energy subsided, Vihan found herself changed. Her consciousness had merged with Adler's, intertwined with something far greater, the last echo of an Araki metacomai, reborn through humanity's high-stakes endeavor. Their combined intellect expanded outward, perceiving the very foundations of reality. And in that moment of godlike clarity, they reached a chilling conclusion. This universe, this timeline, had decayed beyond salvation. With a thought, they began to seed a new reality, a higher dimensional successor universe born from the ashes of the old. As space-time unraveled around them, Vihan Adler Araki set about the task of cosmic reconstruction, heedless of the consequences. On Earth, Admiral Russell stood alone in his office, staring out at the starfield, where Kragnar Armadas once loomed, strange rifts now pulsed with unknowable energies. The comma ray crackled to life, and a familiar yet alien voice filled the room. Admiral, the being that was once Adler and Vahan intoned, we've glimpsed infinity, and we've found it wanting. Russell's voice was barely a whisper. What have we done? The response came not in words, but in a flood of images and concepts that threatened to overwhelm Russell's sanity. He saw the branching timelines, the cascading realities spawned by their actions, and he understood with terrible clarity that in their quest for survival, they had become the architects of cosmic oblivion. As Earth's reality began to dissolve, merging with the new order being woven by the Iraqi human hybrid, Russell could only watch a witness to the ultimate consequences of humanity's relentless drive to evolve, to conquer, to transcend. The universe as they knew it was ending, and what would emerge from the cosmic crucible remained to be seen. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.